All right. Hey, well, good evening. <laughs> Sorry to pull you in from a beautiful night out in the lake in the uh, in the park here, but uh, thought this was important enough to have uh, some senior leadership from Spectrum come out and and talk to us about you know what we currently have and what their proposal is to go to. Um, so I'll introduce uh, Jeremy Mason here in a second. He's our account executive. He'll walk you through what you have as far as the spectrum handout. The last slide is uh, the cost that in the proposal that's going to be on the ballot. I'll, I'll walk you through that. Um, again, we thought this was important enough for uh, the members to get together, bring spectrum out here. Um, you know, we're a unique property just walking up with the uh, with the individuals and the team from Spectrum. Um, some of them haven't been out here yet, and uh, they they recognize we're a unique property. Uh, we have some some unique things that uh, we, from an address and, and customer service standpoint that we require. Uh, so this team will walk through the package, uh, answer any questions at the end of their presentation you may have. Uh, we have some writing questions that came off the website. And then uh, we'll go from there. Uh, we did explain to Spectrum that this is up for a member vote, so um, it's in the membership's hands to uh, to vote and and approve this or not approve it. And then we'll go from there. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jeremy Mason from uh, Spectrum, and uh, he'll get it started and go through the presentation. All right. All right. Jeremy, welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, like you said, Jeremy Mason, um, my quick. Uh, ben and Brad, straight quick. Um, I've been with the company 17 years. I've been in this capacity for the majority of them, about 15 or so. Um, my family and I live up in Bay City, and that is where I work. Um, so I am somewhat I'm local to Michigan, but not local to uh, uh, to this area. Um, I want to also introduce who came with me, and they'll be my silent partners for a minute. Um, in the very unlikely event you stump me, I've got backup. Um, now, you may stop me if you get technical, and it's not unlikely, because I did bring an incredibly huge brain with me. Um, he probably, that's not an offense, I hope. No, no, he's the smartest guy that I know um, in our company, as far as doing this kind of stuff. He really is. So, I brought the big guns with me, so get prepared, put your dukes up. Um, and so, I also brought my director with me, uh, Buckley Andrews, I'll introduce him first. So, Buckley is who I report to, and uh, he's out of the Akron, Ohio area, and uh, I got to say real quick, though, just something about Buckley. One of the things is when Jeff started out and said, you guys are a unique property, I want you to know that when I first started talking with Jeff, I came to Buckley with that same thing, that we got to kind of look at this a little bit differently. And if anybody's ever worked in corporate America, that usually scares anybody with a tie on. So <laughs> he shares that vision and he understands where we're at. And he's the guy that I go to when things aren't working exactly the way we need to. And it's good to have somebody at his level agreeing with us all, right? So I just wanted to kind of preface that. Um, so he's going to be a huge help for us getting the things that you guys are asking of us done, um, because some of them are tough. Um, and I'll tell you what we're going to do to handle that, though. Um, Ryan Heimmiller, again, please don't call him the brain. That probably is <laughs> ill-advised. Yeah, he's also a ninja, so you don't want to call him the brain. But uh, Ryan basically is our support. Every time we do one of these deals, he's, on, he's our front-end support. So he hears all of the things that we say that we want to do, and then he's got to figure out how to get every team to make it happen. <laughs> um, but thankfully, he's incredibly good at what he does. Um, either one of you guys want to jump in and let me get the breath or no? you go. All right, good to go. Um, so <laughs> if you haven't gone to stall already, I do talk like I'm an auctioneer. So um, hang with me. But Jeff had mentioned at the end, we're going to do questions and answers. If you're anything like me, you might think of a question but then five minutes later, you're like, what in the bloody heck was I thinking? If you're that same person, don't feel bad. Just raise your hand. I'm going to solicit Ryan, if that's okay. Um, so just raise your hand, and he'll come by and just ask you quietly without interrupting the flow what's your question and jot it down just to make sure we don't forget it. We can come back to it. Um, is that fair? Can we do that just so we can do that? Awesome. I do appreciate that. Um, this was kind of the flow for the what we wanted to do this evening. This is not all encompassing um, because the last one is Q&A. So if you see something that I missed, um, I'm, I'll stay here all night and answer your question. Well, I don't know about those guys. <laughs> but actually, yeah, don't, don't hold them to that because they might not ever come with me again. But I will stay here all night if you need me to. Um, 
But okay, so going back to the list, one of the biggest challenges that you have is the way that you are set up right now. You are the biggest one-off, is what I would call it, that we have in Michigan. And what I mean by a one-off is you don't exactly fit the mold that you're in, so we're always trying to get creative in order how to satisfy the concern. Well, I'm standing in front of an audience of people that would say that's not working. Um, so we, we recognize that. So I want to tell you, when you, we're asking you to sign with the same company. So a reasonable question is, well, what is the difference? And why should I expect anything different? It's still the name, same name of the company. So I just want to, just two minutes, if you would, to explain why it's not the same. And it's literally night and day difference, to be candid. Um, on the top, it says community solutions overview. That's the team that I represent. Actually, can I interject? Since my boss already saw my code, do you mind if I take it off? <laughs> All right, thank you. All right. I wore a boss again. <laughs> yeah, because if he wasn't here, I'd be in jeans just like you comfortable people. Yeah, for sure. I'm kidding. Yeah, we won't. We'll have a time. later, I'm sure. Sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so community solutions is who I represent. If you took just the customers that we support, just my team, community solutions, all the multi dwelling units, so that is campgrounds, mobile home parks, apartment complexes, condominium associations, senior properties, anywhere where multiple people live in one space, right? That's my group, our group. If you took that away from Spectrum so that none of those customers existed, my group would be the fifth largest cable company in the country. So we're not small. Um, we're not kicking the tires on this stuff with you guys and hope that it works. Um, we're a very well-oiled machine. So rather than trying to take you guys and saying, okay, we're gonna fit you into something that doesn't exist, and we'll keep working with you and put these band-aids on it year after year while you're bleeding everywhere, that's not a great solution. Um, so on the community solution side, we're basically, we're going to look at this completely different, and I'm going to explain that in a second. But again, I just want to paint that picture that, and I'm going to give you some more details to this. I'm not expecting you to just take my word. I'm a sales guy. I get it. So I'm going to give you some evidence of that, and I'm going to ask you to call me out on it if you don't think it's accurate. But I want to really prove to you that this is you're going in a completely different direction. All right. Hopefully, I beat that dead horse. Um, so product comparison. What you guys have now. And what you are going to is monumentally different. Um, when you flip, this is a little bit different than I had. So a channel line comparison is kind of what I was looking at. Um, Judge was nice enough to share some of the concerns that you had so that I might be able to address them up front and save us some time in the question and answer part. A lot of you had questions about the programming and what do we do with this and what a lot of that. So this is not really going to answer a whole lot of those. It's just going to kind of Say what's there and what's not, but good lower the mic. Let me look at that for a second. That's your If we all shared glasses, maybe one of us would be able to read it. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. So I didn't realize it was going to come out that small. Uh, the good thing is, is this is electronic, which means we can make it any size we want and distribute it so that there's no ambiguity. But yeah, so. My point in saying that is the way that you have it now is you have what you have and that is it. Right? That is the TV package that you have, and that is what is offered. So if somebody wanted HBO or, oh, you just got the yellow. Did you want to ask, did his question for him? Grab a pen and paper, this gentleman right here, what we keep telling Thank you. I was going to say, it's going to work out good. Don't help, well, you can ask a question. Now you're seeing the guy behind you. Nervous. Here's the biggest difference that I want to share with you on the comparison part. Your property is like a city. I drove in here. It is like a home. I'm sure many of you, when you pull in and park your car, you feel home. The only thing that doesn't look like home is when you turn on the TV and flip the internet on. It's just so common to it. This is the nicest property I've ever seen in my life. So we're going to be able to align that. We're going to look at you guys like a city. So instead of being a campground, we're going to look at you like you are a city. So what that means is, let me see a show of hands if you don't mind. Go to classroom participation. <laughs> How many of you have Spectrum at home That's away from eating? A few of us. Okay. Yeah. Um, How many of you do that? You have you like the internet speed? Yeah. It works well for you. Internet speed. Oh, I see. So we want that exact same experience that you have at home. We don't want to answer the question. Yeah. Anyway, um, we want that same experience that you have at home. 
to be here. Identical. So if you have service at home and you're wondering what it's going to be like, it's going to be the exact same. For those of you that don't have our service, let me explain yeah. what that means. Awesome. If you own a single family home in a neighborhood and you move into that home and you have the cost spectrum, every greatest feature and benefit and service that we offer as a company is available to you. Some people ask about cloud DVRs and HBO and all these things that we know we have. You may yeah, let's do, I, let's, let's do questions at the end or, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, no, my hope is that you would just write it down and we could come back to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. not so much after dialogue. I didn't accept that. So, so you got it, so we can come back home? All right. You do have it, so we can come back home? Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you for that. All right. So, all right, I'm going to stand here. I think we're still good, yeah. right? All right. Yeah. Um, it's, so hopefully you can hear me a little bit better, and hopefully I don't annoy you to death, and yeah, I think you plug your ears. But, um, so again, anything that you would be able to get at your single family home, you're going to be able to get in your home here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to discount heavily the biggest stuff, you know, the, the Spectrum TV Select, the 400 meg internet. Um, and if you saw on your slide, even just the internet, that's if you did that at your home, it's $100 a month if you want that service. If you just called Spectrum, you moved to a new home, I want 400 meg, it's, it's $100 a month. So that's what we're, we're including that same level of service here. Here's the other benefit of that. And this is something that comes back to the community solution side. What happens when you wanna make that order? What happens if you have a question about a bill? What happens if you have a question about a box or a service call or a technical issue? Gentlemen, <laughs> uh, you're making it hard for folks behind you here. <laughs> um, anyways, um, on the Spectrum Community Solutions side, we're the first company in the industry that built bulk only call centers. Here's what that means. We're, we've got a lot of customers, 25 million some odd customers. If you own a home in a neighborhood and you call Spectrum for help, you go into the pool with all of our customers, right? When you live at Sandy Pines and we set this up and you pick up the phone and call Spectrum, you go into the pool of just the customers that I talked about, just the bulk customers. So on the slide, there's some information on there and I don't wanna take everybody's time going through every single detail, but it is super important to emphasize. The person that answers the phone, if you look at the slide, it gives you the specifics. They're paid more than any other person that answers the phone. They have incredible, more intensive training than anybody else that answers the normal phone. So they're tailored to answer your call. When you call and you say, hey, I live at Sandy Pines. They include this. I want to get HBO, but I don't pay for any of this. You don't have to explain that. Um, so they're very, very well trained. Um, it went so well with the first one, we built four. So we have four of those now, four of those call centers and every single person that answers the phone, they only talk to people like what we're, you know, that are in situations like we are at Sandy Ponds. So a little bit of the comparisons there just between the products is right now you have what you have. And I wanna go one step farther. And this is the tough part. This is the hard truth. What you have right now is not only what you have, it's all you will ever have. Here's why. One of the questions somebody asked was, you know, if you if we don't do this, why can't we just have you guys individual? Or why can't we just everybody do what they want? It's not possible. The reason why is you don't have the technology in this property to support it. So for us to do what I'm talking about, we have to spend, I don't know if I'm so close to a million dollars. It's very close to a million dollars is our capital just to make it work. Um, and that's putting in new fiber optic nodes all throughout the property. We are gonna future proof it so that whatever technology brings down the road, we're looking at you like a city instead of just a campground. So our mindset is different. You know, we know what technology is doing. We're the second largest in the country for a reason. Uh, we're forward thinking and we've got the most ridiculous internet and that's one of the reasons most people come to us. So you'll have the same experience when you get into your home. How you access it will be a little um, little bit different because you've got some pretty cool options. I put the Spectrum TV app is one of them. I put a slide on that. Many of you asked about boxes and DVRs and things like that. 
for those of you that are just creatures of habit and you prefer a box, or maybe you just don't wanna to have to learn a bunch of new technology and learn how to stream and learn how to do all this, that's fine. If you bought a home in a neighborhood and you didn't wanna do any of that stuff, Spectrum wouldn't force you to. So again, we're looking at you the same as we would look at you as if you were in your home, which means, Jeremy, I want a cable box. Fine, we'll give you a cable box and we'll give it to you for free even if you want a cable box. Um, you want a DDR, we'll send you a DDR. Um, now again, the prices are on all the additional stuff. I won't go through them all, but it's the same process for everything. If you want HBO, if you want a box, anything from us, you're gonna get a bill just for that. So you can tell Spectrum, hey, I'm only here. I don't even get mail here. So I want you to send the bill to my home and just set it up EFT and take it out of my card. I mean, whatever you need to do, we'll make it as simple as possible. Or we could send a bill to the office, but as we know, oh, actually some people have mailboxes and some don't. So, I mean, that's secondary to the fact that the availability for you to be able to do it, for you to be able to say, no, I don't want all of this stuff that somebody else might want. I just want this, or I do want all of this stuff. But yet as an association, if, you, if everybody in the room said we want DDRs, well, I could take a DDR that runs close to $30 a month and I could just throw it in for around five bucks. You know, so there's if everybody said we wanted this group of channels, like the entertainment view, that's our new tier. Many of our customers now might know about it. We super cool tier. I won't bore you with that right now, it's, but it's cool. It's 12 bucks. If you wanted that and everybody said, well, Jeremy, we all want that. Well, then, okay, I'll give it to you for three. I mean, there's always ways to like save on that. But the, what we presented today is what 99.99% of people want, which is Spectrum TV Select and 400 meg internet. Anything you want above and beyond that, you can get it, but then everybody else that might not want it doesn't have to pay for it, if that's fair. So that's kind of the approach um, that we took. If you are not one of those people that are stuck in your way and you have to have a box, or even if you are, I would encourage you to kick the tire, see if somebody will help you just get going to check it out. This is where things are going. I mean, this is, there's no dispute about this. Anybody that knows anything about technology will tell you boxes are going to be a thing of the past. It's an administrative nightmare to manage the equipment. If we can just do it all over the air, um, we're going to have different like IP boxes and things that communicate with the internet. And there's always going to be some type like that. With the Spectrum app, you can do everything you want. Um, you can, uh, let's say you wanted a DVR. Somebody said, well, what about a DVR? Even if you just have your app and you're getting it over the air, you can get a cloud DVR. So that means anywhere you're at, anytime, it's there for you. You can go back on the app and you can get it. Um, so again, just it's incredibly cool technology. It is not as hard as you might think um, as far as getting it going. If you ever want to just prove me wrong on that, go to Spectrum's website or even Google Spectrum TV app. One of the top links is always going to be us whenever you do that. There's a, a video even, an instructional video, and it shows step by step. And it even shows here's all the devices you can connect with. Um, one of you asked a question about, you know, well, how come Spectrum doesn't have the app on every platform? I don't use Roku and the, you know, 10 other ones. I use like a Fire Stick or maybe I use, well, whatever, something like that. We want to be on everything. <laughs> of course we do. We want to be everywhere you look and buy things for TV. But that's not how the world works. <laughs> uh, so these are all negotiations that we have with these different companies, right? And we have had the, the biggest of the biggest. So Apple TV is probably one of the bigger ones, Google Chromecast, Roku, another huge one. So we've had a lot of big players jump on board. The other ones inevitably, in my unsolicited opinion, will follow suit at some point because they're missing out because of how many of our customers are doing it now. So that's revenue to them. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see. That's not what I get paid to do, thankfully. Um, but let's say you're that fire stick person. Okay, I get it. It's a minor inconvenience, but you already know the technology because you have a fire stick. So you already know how to do it. Here's your risk, 25 bucks, buy a Roku device and don't use it for anything except the Spectrum app. Put in HDMI 3, you know, every TV has all these HDMI ports. So there's always a workaround that's ridiculously inexpensive. But again, if you're saying, Jeremy, stop talking about that, I want the box, we'll send you a box, okay? Um, I wanna cover um, the welcome letter. 
because everything that I just said about how great it's going to be stops if you can't get the service that you need. There's no value, I guess is my point, in anything that I say if we can't support it. And I know I'm going uphill here because we haven't supported you. I mean, we've tried. I hope that you know. I mean, these I've talked to the, the team, um, this and him included, um, that have tried to support this. And they are more bald than me because they, you can only do so much with what you have. Um, and again, we've been trying relentlessly to figure that out. Um, and the solution is being presented. So the, how you do that, when you come back, I will tell you that the first time that you come back in the fall, or excuse me, uh, in the spring next year, um, God willing, our target is gonna be April 15th, no more than March 1st. I mean, we're, that's our goal here. A lot of that's gonna depend on when we bring this to fruition, but that's our goal is to have April 15th, March 1st, latest. You guys are up and running completely active. When you come here for the first time, you, again, imagine you just moved into a new home. Whatever you think you would do there is the exact same process. So when you get to your new home, quote unquote, you get back to your home here, you phone Spectrum, you're gonna go to that designated phone number to somebody that knows exactly what you're calling for and why you're calling. And you're gonna say, this is my address. Now, and we'll talk about addresses here in just one second. This is my address and I want to get my equipment shipped to me for free. We're not going to charge you for that. Shipping is a little finicky here because of how your city works and FedEx would prefer to just go to the office. So they want to support you just as much as we want to support you. But a lot of, once it gets here, that falls on them. So we had a meeting and they are willing to offer some incredible support for you guys so that when all that equipment comes in, because we're talking about a lot of equipment coming in, it'll all be labeled for everybody's unit and all that. Um, he's got a group of people that are going to help stage with that. Ryan and I were meeting today, and we are going to have a follow-up meeting with some of the bigger wigs on, on the technical side, the boots on the ground team, to see if we can just get some open quota for these guys to hang out, to be here for what-if scenarios. Um, so we want to be able to make sure that you're covered there. The reason I put the emphasis on this year compared to every other year when you come here the first year and everything gets worked out, you get your stuff sent, you go back, you plug it in, it works, everything is great. Take that equipment with you when you leave. Does anybody leave equipment here year at, or throughout the year when they're gone? You do? So we have several hands. And most do, okay, definitely the majority. Um, is there a reason you would not want to? I mean, obviously you're moving it, so. Well, either way, even, is there any difference at all with the, um, like with a, a digital box, with them keeping, well, actually, they're all heated all year when you leave your equipment, they're not, is there any issue with that? Uh, no. Okay, that was my initial <laughs> Okay, all right. I, he covered my concern. Um, so whether you leave it there or whether you don't, whether I initially was saying, hey, take it with you, but if it's safe and he says it is, um, we're okay. Um, when you get back next year, literally your account is already going to be active. It's active all year long. So if you get an itch and uh, are you open? Uh, yeah. You get an itch when on the off season and you want to be able to come hang out, you know, everything's ready and it's already on and it's going for you. Um, so that's all year long. It'll be there for you. Um, and yeah, climate change. Hey, there's a lot of warm days coming in our winters to come. <laughs> um, so yeah, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Yeah, promises. Bite your tongue. All right. Um, all right. So let's get into some heavy duty stuff here. How are the addresses set up in Spectrum system and how is that different from today? I told you one of the number one problems that you have from a growth perspective is that you just don't have the infrastructure to support anything better. It's just there's nothing there to support bringing in more technology. It'll croak. The issue with the addresses is a little bit different. So the issue with the addresses and with technicians finding you and with, with all of the stuff that you deal with, if you ever called Spectrum, I don't know if anybody ever has about your own site, that had to be a nightmare. Um, so, I mean, everything about how you were set up is set up like this, a hotel. Think of a hotel. A hotel is one address in multiple rooms. Nobody knows where any of the rooms are, but they know they're at that one address, so it don't matter. This is a city. It's hard to look at this like a hotel. 
right? But that doesn't matter because that's the way our system sees you is like a hotel. So it sees one address. So if I say drop off a box to site 201, there is nobody that is gonna know what that means once it hits us, okay? And the reason that is, is because the group that you're with is the enterprise spectrum group and that's who they work with, hotels, large resorts and things of that nature. My group works with campgrounds, condominium associations, um, homeowners associations, and also resorts, but just a little bit different of a makeup. It has to be an association based. But the reason I'm saying all that, and this is why I want your confidence to just please hear me on this. This is such a huge difference. When you call Spectrum, or bring that up, when we finish all of this, every single one of your addresses and sites is going to get put into our system just like a city, just like a normal address, if you lived on a neighborhood and this was your address. So what that means is the person answering the phone, they don't have to know about any of this other stuff. All they gotta know is what's in front of them on their screen. And the screen is telling them, this is a multi-dwelling unit, or this is a multi-dwelling unit, residential address with residential bulk codes. That's all they know. That's all they're gonna even see. They can't even make a mistake by accident because the screen is saying, this is a residential address in a community, and here's all the services that are in included for free. It's dummy proof, is my point. It's absolutely dummy proof. Now, does that mean you're never gonna have a problem? No, because we hire humans and some of them are dummies. I'm just kidding, but <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> all silliness aside, things happen, right? Things happen. You call, I'm sorry, I can't find your address and all this, you know, what do I do? So there's another facet to this customer service part. It's super important that we build it right the first time, and that's why I'm telling you how we're building it. We're building it right from a technology standpoint by spending almost a million dollars, and we're building it right in our billing system by looking at you like a city, and we're, we're, we're setting up all the products, looking at it like it's a city, so that you're not handcuffed at anything, but you're also not paying out the rent if you do want 400 meg and all of that. Because if we looked at you like a city, and we took this offer away, you're gonna spend $200 a month for what we're talking about right now. So significant difference, significant difference. So again, you know, I mean, I'm just hoping that, I know some of these things, it's gonna be hard to take my time for it because you've been dealing with things a lot longer than the five minutes I've been battling. But if you just look at the logistics of how we're setting it up in our billing system and why that makes it so much easier for the person answering your phone call, I mean, your experience, you should expect it to be better than when you call at home, because when you call at home, you're going into a pool of 25 million people. But when you call when you're here, you're going into a pool that's just my nice, and they're specifically trained to help you. Um, how is the new system better? I'm not even going down that one. Um, if you're not convinced on that, then my job is done here. Um, <laughs> how do I get billed? Um, you are only going to get a bill from Spectrum if you order something above and beyond. Um, don't let me forget about mobile phones. All right, I'm gonna call you Van. I like that better than Bray. Vanna White, uh, my lovely assistant. <laughs> so hold me, hold me accountable. Um, how do you get billed is, so if you, again, if you don't want anything more than what you're getting here, then you're never gonna see a bill. The only caveat to that is the FCC requires that anytime we make some major changes that we send out notice to all of our active customers and we're looking at you like a city. So our billing system is gonna say all of these addresses need to know that whatever, you know, XYZ channel moved here or, or they went out of business or whatever. So, or if a rate increase or something, anything like that. So I didn't warn you on that yet, Jeff. So Jeff's just hearing this now. <laughs> so there is a chance that you could get 2,000 letters showing up and you have no idea why. Um, open one, email it to me, and I'll, I'll tell you what they are because that does happen. We can't control it. It's an automated thing. If there was an individual person having to do that for the whole country, that would be their, that'd be it for them. That'd be the full-time job. So it's computer. A computer says this account is a residential address in a city, so it needs to get a letter. Um, other than that, the only reason you're gonna get one, you guys, is if you order something and you're gonna know what that is. My recommendation is if you're even marginally savvy, open a Spectrum account online if you want, and then you can get that online. You can get a bill, they'll email it to you if you want. And again, you can send the bill anywhere you want, so you don't have to try to manage if it does come here. Um, 
All right. So for those of you that did not bring your beta blockers with me and weren't prepared for my fast talk, and I do apologize, um, hopefully I covered everything. Again, I just wanted to go through that briefly because I wanted to take as much time as I could to field some of the harder questions that I might not have addressed. We already have two people in front, so I'm going to start with them, if that's yeah, okay. Oh, thank you. See? You already earned your paycheck, buddy. Mobile. Oh, you guys. I just learned this the other day, and I'm a nerd. I will admit this. I'm a nerd when it comes to this stuff. It gets me excited. I love technology, so clearly I'm in the right job. But um, we got something that just came out that is ridiculous, and we got something coming even pretty soon as well with speed boost. But um, Spectrum Mobile. I don't know if you've seen our commercials or whatever, but the price is ridiculous. And the sir, does anybody have Spectrum Mobile? Does anybody a couple of them? Um, so Spectrum Mobile, when you're a Spectrum internet customer, um, you have the availability to get Spectrum Mobile. That's the only way you can get it. You can't just walk into a Spectrum store and walk out with a cell phone and nothing else. So you are all going to be Spectrum Internet customers. So you have that option if you want it. So who cares and why is that cool? <laughs> um, Anywhere you're at on the property, your cell phone is going to work just like you're standing right next to a cell tower. Um, that's something that's pretty cool. One of the reasons why that is is just how we set up our technology. And this applies outside of even Sandy Pines. You go anywhere in the country where there's spectrum and you've got a spectrum phone, you're going to have it like you're standing right next to a cell tower. And it's because of how cool we are with the technology and all these big brains like that guy. <laughs> What's that? Spectrum. Yeah, you're right. Spectrum and Comcast. We're the only two providers that have this technology available, and there's one simple reason why. We've got cable all over the place. We've got cable plant everywhere. So we don't need to get a half a billion dollar permit to put a cell tower in a farm. Um, we've got cable going down your road, so we can put mobile um, antennas going right down the road. Another thing that we can do when you're out and about here, everybody's going to have Wi-Fi. Um, when in our Wi-Fi, I don't want to get too technical, but um, I'll say an address. Um, your Wi-Fi router has different addresses that it can use. So one address will be for you that you have 400 men. One address will be for a guest if you so choose to have a guest network, if you want that. You control your own network, so you do, not you control, you know what I mean? Everybody, it's private, you do what you want, and your neighbor can do something different. So... Um, Oh, yeah. So the router. Yeah. Um, I thought I lost my train of thought. I was going to speed boost. It's three dresses. Three dresses. Thank you. Yeah. Seriously, you're at steak dinner tomorrow, buddy. Um, <laughs> three addresses. The, th the, the guest network is optional. The third one is if anybody has a Spectrum mobile phone, then what's going to happen is it's going to kick out a gig of service, a gig, 1G of internet speed to that mobile phone anywhere that it sniffs out a wireless spectrum signal. Now you as a customer have that other address with your 400 meg. So it's not like, you know, a bunch of people walking down my street, all of a sudden I'm losing my Netflix movie. No, it's not how the technology works. So each one has its own, they're called an SSID that taps into that. We increase the speed of the modem. The modems that we're putting in here today are next level. Um, for any techie people in the room, they're DOCSIS 3.1 modems which means you're not gonna come close to exhausting the technology in that modem in the very near future. Um, even 400 meg, I know that's what we're selling, but it's an overkill. Um, if you download you know, two Netflix 4K movies at the same time, you might be getting 16 megs you know, of speed. So, I mean, you're not touching it. But super cool with that phone is you're gonna get that speed and you're gonna get that connectivity anywhere you're at. Does anybody have a cell phone that's not with us that has trouble with it while they're here? Like you can't get online or anything? You do? I noticed that you do as well. Yeah, I find that to be a little common too sometimes. When you get out and about and you're in a place this beautiful, the trade-off is you got this view <laughs> instead of the cell phone signal, but that'll be gone. So for those of you that struggle with that, you won't have to worry about that anymore um, if you come over to the dark side. <laughs> um, so if you if you go over it, but um, one thing that I can almost promise you without risk of error um, is that if you do think about doing that, you are going to save money. I don't know if you see our commercials, but we don't throw in a bunch of surprise taxes or anything like that on our cell phones. Um, we're using Verizon towers, but it's funny that we actually outperform you know what Verizon can do um, because of our fiber backbone that we're using to support it and the network that we have everywhere to support it. It's it's ridiculous. 
Um, so quick question. So that's what I want to say about that. This gentleman was first. Yeah. And then I believe in the gentleman. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so we probably sum, sum it up as um, a couple of uh, interns on channel lineups. Um, mainly you know, the golf channel and the weather channel that was that was that we saw on the lineup. Okay, let's talk about that. So Golf Channel is on there. That is part of the Spectrum TV Select lineup. Um, is that Sports View? No, Sports View is a different package. Sports View. So let me let's that's a good time to talk about that. So his question was, was it on Sports View? Yes, it is on Sports View, but it's also on our ball package for the I'm let me see if I get my glasses. I remember we checked it before we left to make sure that. Uh, oh, Lord Almighty, that's so I'm smart. Sorry, Jerry, I was just saying, yeah, I got Carol, so I do not have the money to get that. So, yeah, because I could have swore when, when I checked that golf was always part of the entertainment view. But when we checked it earlier, so I don't even know if this is the most. So, let me take my pen. So, here's what I'm going to do I want to explain what those tiers are, real quick, and what the question or how that works with channels. Because some of you already, you might already have other channels. Maybe you don't watch golf. So maybe in your mind, you're thinking, what about this channel? So it's probably going to be easier just to address all of them as a group, right? Um, instead of attacking them one at a time. So um, the entertainment view used to be called, it used to be two different things. It was digital tier one and digital tier two. Digital tier one, many of you might remember, a lot of channels went away. Like, um, well, there was the golf channel was certainly one of them, Hallmark. Um, was moved over there. Um, they didn't actually leave the lineup. They just went to the digital tier. So if you wanted it, you had to buy it. And then there was a second tier. We got rid of those two tiers and just combined them into one. Cool thing, same price. They used to be 12 bucks each. We combined them together and it's 12 bucks for the one. But we pulled more, the majority of the sports channels out of that. I, not all of them, but the majority of them and put them into a sports tier. Why do we do that? And the sports tier I think is nine bucks is what we had on there. Um, you got to remember, even if you're like, man, I am a sports fan. I go to bed every night and I think about it. And the first thing in the morning with my cup of coffee is sports center. Not everybody's that way, but the, and the sports channels are some of the most expensive in our lineup. So what we did is we packaged them and we wanted to, the people that want sports, they're going to love the sports tier because it's got all of that nine boxes, a drop in the bucket for somebody that likes sports. But so again, if you wanted any of the channels that are not on the right, I'm going to get a blown up clear and current one. The only thing constant in the cable business is change. We're all, things are always moving. We have to adapt with the demands of everybody we serve. So I will get that to Jeff uh, by Monday. Um, so he'll have that and be able to post it wherever you guys will be able to get that. But the quick answer is if you see anything on there that you don't want, it doesn't mean it's not available. Um, so we have to look from a price point. And then if everybody tells Jeff, hey, this, you know, this and all of us want this one channel, fine, come back to me and I will make it so that it's incredibly cheaper than paying for it individually. Um, again, our strategy here was to make it as least expensive for everybody um, instead of just throwing things in. Um, the gentleman with the mention, can you answer this question? Um, yes, uh, seasonal pricing. Seasonal pricing. How do you use it? So you, why, don't, why don't we do this? Um, I'll uh, I'll go through the pricing, how it impacts the the members here, mm -hmm. um, if you don't mind, and then we can at the end we'll do technical questions to Spectrum. If you have Sandy Pine specific questions, you can ask me. Okay, um, so if you guys want to go to that internet comparison slide real quick, we'll try and pull all of this together for you. All right, so current versus proposed. Current right now, what you have is a 200 Mbps modem for your Wi-Fi, if you have Wi-Fi. So we have over 2,000 members in the park, sites in the park, um, close to 20, 2,200. We have right now, the current process is, if you want a modem, you sign up. If you don't want a modem, you don't have to sign up and then you don't pay that cost. That's what you have currently. If you have a modem, there's 1,600 members in the park today that have modems. What you get is that 200 Mbps download, 10 upload. You have to connect it with your own router, right? 
And typically when we have, when you call and you do a service call, you call Abby up front and then we have Andy or the tech crew come out to try and do a service call. 87% of those service calls, according to what we see is the modem not talking to the router. Okay. The router came with the trailer. It's 10 years old. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll try and fix that router, get you going, get you on your way. The proposed is you're going to get a faster download 400 Mbps and 20 upload. And you're going to get a Wi-Fi 6 router in the package that is completely compatible with the modems. Why are we doing that? To try and eliminate the service calls and the connectivity issues that everybody has. If you want to continue to use your router, you're more than welcome to. We recommend not use these that uh, come with it. It's just a smooth process. Okay, so that's 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 number one. You're going to get that at no cost. If you then go to the the very last slide that has the Sandy Pines logo on it. This is the resolution that's out there right now and it's posted on the website. And again, it'll be posted. Um, if you haven't seen it already, it'll be posted throughout the park. But this is the resolution that the board um, of directors have have approved um, or actually supported. Excuse me, the members have to go approve it. The board of directors are asking the membership to approve the following proposal. Shall the membership approve an annual spectrum charter TV and internet assessment of 426 per member per year for the new year round 12 month TV and internet services, including new infrastructure and equipment, replacing the current $136 annual assessment, which is a seasonal one, for your cable and the current $192 six month seasonal modem internet fee for a period of five years. Shall uh, assessment shall not increase more than 6% annually to cover possible increased costs from spec spectrum charter during the initial five year period. After the initial five year assessment pricing and program to be reviewed with spectrum charter where either party may cancel with six month notification or automatically renew annually every 12 months. The assessment begins. Increase the assessment every year. So in the, in the assessment, the 426, yeah, it's kind of what we also had with the cable. At the end of the 12 months, Spectrum and Sandy Pines, we typically meet in the fall and we say, all right, how did the year go? Well, we're forecasting a 3% increase. We have to have that right in there to pass any increases through that they may give us. However, if they come in and say, you know what, Jeff, it's a 10% increase, we have it capped at six. Okay, so we, we, have, a, we have a capped assessment increase. It could be 1%, it could be 6%, it could be nothing over the five years. Six years. It could be a 36 percent increase. It could be yes. But you have the option to get out. Yeah. Or or yeah. Or we have the Sandy Pines has the option. Have the ability. Yep. 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 So that that's what goes. So let's take a look at this this last slide that has the cost comparison. So again, I kind of went through the current costs. $136 TV cable assessment is what you're being paid today or being charged today and 192 for the modems. The modems right now is a choice. Going forward, it's it's not a choice. Everybody gets a modem. All right. And then the proposed cost is $114 for TV and 312 for the modems. That's where you get the 426. The 426 is where we would, uh, if the membership passes, that's what would be starting October 1 on your annual dues. And then that would be the first year. Then we again negotiate at the end of the year. 
Again, the difference though is you're getting 12 month access and service. If you come and do use the park during the off season, we have many people coming in for Winterfest. Um, they lodge here during hunting season. Uh, they come in and, you know, ice fish, snowmobile, things of that nature. You have access to your cable year round. This same package, if you look at it down in the yellow box, Spectrum TV Select, and Jeremy already told me, hey, it's actually $79.99 now, not $76.99. So um, $76.99 and $99.99 uh, $99 monthly cost for this package, if you were in a true residential area, is $177 roughly a month. Annualized is $2,000, over $2,000 a month. So anybody here in the condos? Wow, I think the condos have the 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 parks members out outnumbered here. Holy cow! So the number one question I have been receiving is, what happens if this gets voted down and the members do not want it? We do not have the ability to have TV and Wi-Fi here. As what you heard Jeremy state, the infrastructure here is old, it's dying, it's hard for them to service. We have connectivity issues. Unfortunately, you know, it's, it's, it's old technology. If we wanna to continue to move forward, we need the new technology and the upgrade. That's what we're getting. Now, for all of you that raise your hand in the condos, you have the ability because you are a residential area lumped in with the bulk package. You can call and get your own internet from Spectrum. You're going to pay $179, $176.99 on a monthly basis for 12 months. So the condos have preferential pricing lumped in with the park. And just to be very transparent with the, with the condos and, and the rest of the membership, Spectrum historically, not necessarily this group, but Spectrum historically has said, just eliminate the condos because we want them to go residential. We have said that's not in the best interest of our members. The best interest of our members is to have that bulk package pricing, which gets you reduced pricing. So there's 54 condos that could go outside of this, the rest of the membership, we would not, we would not have an option, quite honestly. Yes, uh, what, what happens to Sandy Vines if we don't do this? Will you lose your internet service? So oh, great, internet stuff you do for us now? great, great question. So um, thank you, Larry. Our cameras, our security, a lot of that stuff is connected through all of our Wi-Fi. So the short answer is, we would have to find, from an operational standpoint, a different solution, which would be more costly. And then obviously that rolls into our operational budget, which then means more cost to the members. Anyways. Quick question. Yes, Rudy. Uh, Spectrum PV app, can I cancel my cable and use that and throw it? No. No, no. Nice try, Great Rudy. Question. Hey, you smiled, so I knew that you were, you were just kind of open a little bit. Um, no, you can't. But there's a caveat, though. There is a caveat. Yeah, the Spectrum app can work anywhere on the property. If you're one of those customers that did upgrade because you wanted something more, now you actually have a Spectrum account with us, and then that situation is different. So once you have, if you upgrade or anything and you go in and create that online um, account and you add like HBO or whatnot, um, then when you're away, you're gonna have that experience. So it's not quite what you would hope probably. <laughs> but, Hold on. Before, Hold on. Yeah, we got one in the back, yes. We cannot we cannot keep what we have. So we would have no TV or no So if the spectrum if the spectrum gentlemen will or gentlemen will plug their ears, 
there are other, are other options, we know this. right? And they know that as well. Um, I've had I've had people uh, just being very transparent. I've had people come in and say, "I'm not paying the 192 for the Wi-Fi. I'm going to connect my smart TV to my hotspot, and I'm going to run that on a hotspot." Anybody try that? Yeah, I was going to say. I did when I first started here. My 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 data ran out. My monthly data ran out in four days. Get a spectrum phone to plug one. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, well, here I have I have Verizon. I have Verizon, and I have unlimited as well. But what happens is, and and you know, I'll leave it to Ryan and and the the experts here. But what happens? What happened to me with Verizon is, I have unlimited as well. When they see them using this data consistently to watch TV, download. I get a notification, your data has 10% left. And when I hit that number, all of a sudden my my screen goes e -e 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 like that and it starts slowing the data down. So then I have to wait until it rolls over. I would have to wait until it rolls over next month. So you can get unlimited data, you can connect to a hotspot, you can do those things, but there's a, there's a there's a cause and effect to that, and it's it's not going to work. I mean, I know like in my area, maybe you know, I have Xfinity, mm -hmm. the spectrum is there. Mm -hmm. Right. So is that the same as this? Is Spectrum the only one that can do this whole area? I mean, is this really? So Spectrum has all of the infrastructure here. And again, the gentleman from Spectrum can correct me if I'm wrong. But Spectrum has all of the infrastructure here. We have gone out, we have seeked, and I've been very transparent with Spectrum um, because your pain is my pain when it comes to service and connectivity and all that other stuff. I've gone out, there's um, two other companies that we con contacted. Uh, they came out, they walked the property, their costs are significantly higher. They would have to tap into Spectrum infrastructure and then there's a cost for that. And then when I walked them through phase one and phase two from the administration building, they said, oh, you got a nice campground. I said, this is just two of seven areas. <laughs> and they're like, what? So we, we, walked, we walked them through the largest, the company that had the largest campground was 300 sites. And they, they walked through here and they said, yeah, we think we can make this work. Don't don't want to do an experiment. Bob, you guys. Yeah, basically, you divide this up. It comes to about thirty-five, fifty a month. Correct. And you have year round. Correct. The other thing is, currently, we do have a year round that we have to pay for our service. Mm -hmm. Which is not something that we have to pay for. Right. 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 Um, because I expect to lose more money, and I pay even less because it's a condo. Yep. The association, I think I pay eight bucks per box or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but then in Xfinity, I can't get any deal with Xfinity in Chicago. That's a big box. It's a hundred bucks that I've got limited channel. Right. But the point is, this comes up to thirty-five thousand fifty cents a month. Even if you go up by six percent, you right. know, it's a pretty good deal. Uh, for those who live close by, like, you use it often. Yep. Um, I don't think there's a whole, as long as you guys do what you think you can do. Exactly. Right. Well, that's, you laugh, but that's, no, that's, that's the thing. No, they were. I agree. Yeah. This sounds like it's a, a pretty fair deal for us. In the hat, yes. Yeah, a couple of questions. One, I, I would mind like seeing the copies of the other proposals that you have. Mm -hmm. To see, so we could also for our eyes compare, um, you know, like price or you know, effects. But I'm not taking this is for us. And also, you had mentioned that the moisture and the coldness, if we're not here six months out there, will not affect our equipment. And I'd like to see if you have a copy of some stats or tests that you guys have run. Yeah, compares it because the frustrating thing for us is to get here. And find out the equipment doesn't work because we had it locked up, and these are tin cans that some of us live in, so it's not an apartment structure. And then also, I'd like to know are we getting a copy of the main bill 
that you are receiving. So we, for our eyes, can see the total amount and the breakdown. Like if you're getting a bill for, you know, three hundred. Four hundred dollars or whatever a month right. times right. twenty two hundred things when we right. get that. And then lastly was if we are considered as a city, right, an apartment complex, does that change our campground status for that when you do that? Because I don't want to pay for something for a whole year and find out I'm getting shut out from having the COVID right. thing and then I'm paying for stuff I can't even utilize yeah. or use. If that's going to change, that's yeah, I can speak to that part of it because when I'm using that terminology of the city, what I'm talking about, guys, is the coding in our system. So I'm not talking about like we're reporting to the to the you know the municipality and we're saying okay this is now a city in our system. This is just how I we need to set it up in our system so that when the appropriate people are servicing your account, they're looking at it the right way. So, I mean, again, it's there's not like a code that says this is a city. It's on each individual account, how that account is set up that reflects the same account that would be in a city, if that makes sense. But there's no designations or anything outside of just how we look at your individual account and how it's coded. But nobody knows that but us. And the, the main person you want to know that is the person answering the phone. And you said that our infrastructure is already in place. So yeah. the infrastructure is already in place, but that we're outdated and stuff. Yeah. But is it going to really cost a million dollars to yeah. upgrade? Yeah, I can just touch on a couple of the main things because you made a great point because you're like, well, if it's already there, how much more do you need to do it? So what we're going to be doing, and this is a huge part of our cost, is we're going to be bringing in fiber to something called a node. Super quick, he could get real deep in this, but a node basically takes the fiber optic coming in and says coax after, right? You only have two of those right now. And two of those cannot support this much traffic coming into our system. We're, you're going to have six percent, six, uh, seven additional, seven additional nodes. One node, just the little box, nothing else that goes into it, the time it takes to set it up, none of that other stuff. 40 grand or 60 grand? Oh, it is. We have 28, I haven't been looking at it. 28 miles of plant in the ground in this property. 28 right miles. Yeah. 28 miles. We, uh, well, we're not putting like 5G's or right. anything on uh, 5G tower stuff. Well, 5G it's is more different. of a cell phone thing, so no, we're not. We're definitely not doing that. Um, all we're going to do is we're going to take the existing infrastructure. We're going to identify the areas within that infrastructure that need a boost for a very non-technical definition. So that one node, for example, can handle so much capacity. It's like somewhere in the neighborhood of like 500 accounts at the same time. So you've got two nodes, our best possible case scenario at any given time, again, with the level of technology I'm talking about bringing in, is a thousand people. Um, so we're overkilling this, but there's a reason though, because it's, again, the, we have to think in the future, number one, because if we put just two more in there and it worked great for you, we don't want to have this conversation with you again in a couple of years and go to our senior leadership asking for the checkbook. <laughs> that's frowned upon. <laughs> so we would rather look at it now and just do it right the first time. So that's why you're going to have so something else. So instead of having, you know, one or two like little hoses, we're bringing, bringing bigger hoses out and four of them. Right. Yes, there you go. And uh, to answer your question on, on the billing, we'll, um, we'll explain the billing. So you will not get a copy of the bill because how the bill currently is run is we our bill is about that thick and it's commingled with our station, it's commingled with the golf course, it's commingled with other operational stuff that we will not release out to the public. Now, now... Why is that? Yeah, why, why, I mean, if we're, if we're paying for your services, rangers and everything, that's what we yep. pay for, yep. right? Why wouldn't we be able to see? We just, we just don't release that stuff because what happens is all of a sudden it shows up on social media and it shows up here. And then all of a sudden our $35.50 gets out into the public and I say, well, hey, why don't I have the $35.50 as well? So we just we that that's operational policy. We we will not share that information. We will not release that information because of the ability of somebody putting it out on social media. The the other the other thing that from a billing perspective, again, we have one corporate account, one large bill that comes directly to Sandy Pines. So when you guys sign up, that one bill will be 
um, the Sandy Pines address that comes to us. Then when you call in and you get asked, hey, what is your email address, your contact information? You put your permanent address in that system. That's what would then get billed if, hey, if I want HBO Max, if I want Sports View, if I want any of the additional add-ons, that's how Spectrum bills you directly. And then you do get that, you do get that information. So any of the add-ons will be through the system on your own. You want a DVR, you want a box, you want an extra this, that, and the other thing. That will be separate and you guys can get billed directly. So hold on a second. Nancy, what do you have? Yes. Um, just suppose that um, I decide I want to be entertainment view as an option for twenty dollars. Can I just have that for the four or five months that yes. year, or am I going to be paying that? Great question. Great question. Let me broaden that a lot. Her question was is if she wanted to add something and, and her selection was the entertainment view, but maybe yours is HBO or maybe yours is something else. Uh, we don't have contracts with that level of service. We're pretty confident you're going to love it. And if, if you don't love it, then you should be able to leave. So if you get the entertainment view and you want to change it every month, maybe you want it for four months, but your plans change. You got to head up. You can call us and add and change things pretty fluid. Um, again, because we're looking at you just like a normal home. And we don't have any contracts on that type of stuff with our services. So it's just that so many of us are snowbirds that are sure. here yep. for a problem. Yep. So yeah, yeah, you'll have a lot of control over how you want to manage that. Um, I think there was somebody up here first. I this still don't know that. Then, yep, yeah, he was. Yeah. Uh, first of all, the system, is, the new system, is going to be compatible with the quad tuners. Totally different. You don't even need quantum tuners. Quantum no, tuners. I mean, the reason why is because the equipment that we've got that's based on that quantum, having the quantum tuner be able to communicate yeah. with your system. Yeah. So let me just back it up just to make sure I heard you right. So when you're saying that device, are you talking about the TV that you have has a quantum tuner? Yeah, most of yes. the, the, the TV, smart TV we yeah. have. Yeah, yeah. But, that's but also, talking. we have a recorder box. Yes. Yes. Yep. That, that's based on the quantum tuner. Yeah. Well, when you say based on quantum tuner, all that means is that device has to be able to understand that quantum signal. Right. So this is kind of above and beyond that. So if you have a TV that has that, we're not even using that. Um, you're going to plug your HDMI cables right from the cable, the cable box, and right into your TV or the Spectrum app, of course. But if you have a box today, you don't, it doesn't matter if your TV has a quantum toner because you're using the HDMI. We don't have a box. Right, but right now you have to plug in. So your TV is basically the box. That quantum toner is the box right. inside the TV. Kind of is a better way. Yeah. Hold on, Were you late? yes, ma'am. Well, they're talking about the $35. It actually just breaks down to a little more than $8.12 a month additional for what we're paying now. Right. So just wanted to make sure everybody was just the eight bucks Thank you. I think I got your first month right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy. I like to pay more money to use it as our home. How how many how many families are like you that only use this four months out of the year? That that's a great question. Um, I don't I don't have any stats on that, Ruby. Um, you know what what I have seen though is the demographics at Sandy Pines is changing. Where the the snowbirds that are here six months out of the year are starting to shrink a little bit, and we're now getting people that are. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, boom, they're gone. And then they come back Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, boom, they're gone. And they do that. But what I've also seen because of those families that are like that, they're not snowbirds. They're coming in the fall and winter. They're going to come out They're They're bringing their kids to Winterfest. They're bringing their kids to um, go ice fishing, uh, snowmobiling. So, we have seen some activity pick up in the park during the off season. So is it an equal trade? I I, I can't tell. But a good question. Yes, sir. Clarifying the usage of the Spectrum TV app off uh, the outside of the park, you know, 
off so campus. Why do we use this somewhere else, or is it just limited just here? Kind of yeah, it's just here. No, that's a great question. Thank you. I, I'm glad I got the chance to come back and clarify that. So, if you only have what is offered to Sandy Pines, the app will only work on Sandy Pines. Okay. Anywhere on the Sandy Pines property. Um, if you buy additional stuff and you are a Spectrum customer above and beyond the relationship with Sandy Pines, then the app will work anywhere that you can connect it here. That's the easiest way for me to say it. So if, if you only, if you don't get a bill from us, you can only use it on the property. If you get a bill from us, that means you have something else, um, and now you can access it. Follow up? Yeah. yeah. Um, when will the contract officially start? So we could actually start using it if we have an initial service. Great question. I'll take that. That sounds like eager. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, here, here's the logistics or the gymnastics of this, right? So it's got to go. Poor English. My wife would hit me. It has to go to a member vote because it's an assessment. We did. I did get the question. Well, hey, it it's going to impact operations. It's going to impact. So why are we even voting? Just push it through. It's an operational decision. Our bylaws state that if that incremental dollar impact to the members it exceeds X amount, it has to go to a member vote. This does do that. It, it has to go to a member vote. We vote on August 20th of this year. At the end of the day, the votes get tallied and then we get the announcement. We send it out to the membership. Here's all the proposals that passed or failed. Here's the board elections. If this passes, then I immediately call Jeremy and say, hey, on August 22, which is Monday, depending on how it went, I might need a day to recuperate. Tuesday, um, give, give Jeremy a call, bless you, and say, hey, this passes. Then they draft a contract that we have to sign. It's a five-year contract. And then they have to start allocating a team. So at a high level, this passes August 20th by 9-1, we get a contract in our hand. And then, you know, 30 days later, they start getting boots on the ground. It's going to be a tight, tight schedule because of the seven additional nodes that need to come in the infrastructure. Um, you know, typically to get something through the park to do so or through a area like of this at magnitude about 120 days from a construction standpoint to get things going and connected so i was pushing jeremy uh i want everything loaded and ready to go and modems everything here mailed to us by march 1st realistically it'll it'll be somewhere between april 1st and april 15th um the back, what we call the back office stuff that we have to do, Spectrum has to build those individual accounts. We have to then send, they have to um, then have you guys call in with that welcome letter. You would get a welcome letter. They have to get your contact information in there because then if you want to buy any of the upgrades, they have information to bill you directly. That all can try and run parallel with the construction, but the, the construction, you know, we were we were quoted construction on this building. We we're quoted construction on the on the bridge, and it's all weather based and and, and resource based. So, it's going to be it's going to be tough. So with that said, real quick, um, there are um, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, construction guys, a lot of leadership field up to like everyone on this side that are really they're they're very very eager to to be able to um, you know get this moving. So once uh, you know, once it's determined how the proposal goes, um, you know, even before contracts are inked, we're going to be reaching out to them. You know, at least some people who start getting everything ready. You know, even attempt to try to cut this as quickly as possible, um, because you know, um, you know, based on how the proposal does, you know, is you know, it's what we're going to know how it goes. Um, and so, you know, if it passes, then you know, like get everyone ready because hey, it's coming. And so, you know, anything, anything we can do to cut down on time is exactly what we're going to be doing. Yep. Um, how does it work if I have more than one TV? Good question. So, um, depending, well, so there's two answers. You like a box or you don't like a box? Well, 
Man, you know, these cheapest, whatever the cheapest thing that you can find out, I think Roku might be the cheapest. I don't know. Is there one cheaper yeah. than Google? Yeah. But you get like a Roku device, uh, Amazon or wherever you like to shop. And a Roku device is basically a little device that plugs into your HDMI port and it comes with a remote control. So it's almost like a little tiny cable box that plugs into the back of your TV. And with that little remote control, so let's say you plug it into HDMI one, put your TV to HDMI one. And when you go onto that, it looks a lot like you would see like on the internet on a computer and you can download the Spectrum app right to the device. And then once the app's there, just like an app on your phone that you would click an app, you click the Spectrum app and it auto, it knows who you are. It automatically, you know, turns on and auto authenticates is the technical term. So there's nothing that you're having to type in every time. It's just automatically says, oh, here I am. Boom, you're on. That, I would do that because then you pay that once and you're never paying anything again. If you want a second box and you, you are a box person, it's $9.99 for a box. You must love boxes uh, if you're paying $9.99 for a box because I'm going to call my grandson. I'm going to pay my neighbor 50 bucks because that I'll get that money back in five months. And then from there, I'm green. So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't need any smart TVs. You just need a TV with an HDMI port. Yep. Yeah. 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 Then you're good. Why would I need a Roku? The Roku is something. Something's coming into the. Is it a coax or HDMI that's coming into the trailer? Into my trailer. Well, not for TV. It's it's wireless. No, it's it's over the air. So that HD, that thing that you plug into the HDMI is going to it's going to see that wireless signal. So it's going to communicate with That's the internet. The second TV you need to be You're the first TV. You Any TV. Well, first one came no, 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 no. This question was. Oh, first one is wired. Second one is not. That's my idea. Oh no. Okay, let me simplify that. Let, okay, one TV, two, three TV doesn't matter. You can either put a cable box on a TV or you can do the Spectrum app. So now let's take the cable box out of the equation for a second, because that's the only thing that requires plugging anything in from us, right? If you just do the app, that Roku device that you buy is basically the cable box and everything that you need. So when you plug that into the HDMI, it's getting the TV signal through the internet, through the Wi-Fi. Okay. So basically all that device does is it just has an operating system on it and allows you to put apps on it. That's all it does. Yeah, Get you right on your main TV. You would have to have a second Roku device, for example. Perfect. All right. Sorry for stumbling over that, but yeah, you would need one for each TV. I think the I think the question over here, though, for clarification, is if I don't want if I don't have a Roku, we have a bunch of old TVs, non smart TVs. When you say I just get a box, the box needs the coaxial cable to plug into. Right. So can the coaxial cable plug into the back of the TV? No. And that's the box. No. Well, that depends on TV. Why wouldn't it? No. Why wouldn't it? That's box. Oh, we don't even have any of those outputs anymore. Right. Really. It's just HDMI only. only. Yeah. It's so coax is an owner. So HDMI only. Okay. Yeah, because I think I have one of the older boxes because I've been. With so the he's got to follow. Yeah. Maybe you don't oversell a Roku because there are, you know, the thousand smart TVs. So somebody has like a Samsung or something like that. Yeah. And you may be able to load the app right on the TV in front of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's more and more of those coming. Yeah. If anybody didn't hear that, there are TVs that you can buy that you can put the app right on the TV without having to buy any of this stuff. Right now, the biggest one is any Samsung TV that was made after the year 2012. It's going to come preloaded with our app already on it. And those relationships are being created all the time. So it'll get easier as we go. Um, and I wouldn't even, there's so much stuff coming related to that, but yeah, but we'll just talk about now. Right now, you need one device for each TV. Um, yes, ma'am. Is there a, I know it's a number that how many people can access the app, but is there a limit to how many It's like, is it 20 or something on it? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, it's not. 20 to 25 active connections. Not, not, that's the ones that are signed in. Way more than you'll need. Yeah. But ones that are actually. I was going to say, five grandkids, you're good. Yeah. So if anybody's having a family reunion here, you're out of luck. Yeah. Again. Again. Hold on. Uh, it's, it's just a. Oh, sorry. No, finish it. Isn't that okay? It's just an arbitrary. Okay. 
Sorry, are you waiting? No, I'm asleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ken, go ahead. Could you repeat that? Yeah. Pressure around here since there is potential for disruption in service while they're doing all of their connecting and disconnecting. Great question. Very good question. So there's typically the way that we do it is we would do what's called a cutover. So um, and, and we'll have to get because of the scope of this. I don't want to go under the assumption that it's the same thing I've always done. Um, so I'm going to get clarification. But the way we've always done it, um, and I'll make sure it fits here too, is we get everything connected and then we'll have a cutover. And so it'd usually be like from 12 to 4 in the morning or something to that effect. We're not going to pick like you know, Memorial Day weekend on a Saturday. So, you know, we appreciate breathing as well. I mean, you got the glitches. Yeah. <laughs> One of the questions that, that came up on the question we raised in Ellen on this. The question is if we don't know the sector, you start to look for other providers. This will never get done. Yeah. Agreed. Am I correct? You're, you're absolutely correct. Okay. Absolutely correct. So if we go out and say, I want to get a bid from that city, right. I want to get a bid from somebody else. Right. You guys are not going to get their deadline. Right. So we, we have low hanging fruit, who we called. We called ATT, not interested. They don't service out here. We called Xfinity, not interested, not going to service out here. We called a company, Aspen Net. They do out west. They were the ones that we came out and they came out and walked the property and said, holy cow, we do 300. You're a little bit larger than 300. We'll get back to you. But getting getting tapped into their infrastructure, probably going to be significantly expensive. Um, and I've got one other one that was like a um, hundred or less campground. So we, we are at the point where before we put that proposal or that resolution out there for the board to review. We reviewed all of this with the board and that's why they voted um, to support this resolution. And back to Bob's point, if we unpack all that and start over, our contract ends with Spectrum on the current product, October 1st. So now the next question is, okay, well, hey, wait a minute, October 1st to April 15th, what do I have? All right. So we are still talking about, again, the current contract is seasonal equipment, which is April 15 to October 15. Agreed. So so that's that's where we're cut over what we're talking about and overlapping. We get the contract signed, then we got to have that service continued until we get the new service taken care of. Jeff. Um, one of the points that should be made is if this one doesn't go through, there won't be a vote. There couldn't even be a vote for another contract until sometime next year. August. They could do an earlier one if they Special want to, election. But that would only get you a couple months, maybe. So you'd be looking at going over a year without anything before you even got something that would have to be installed. Right. Yes, in the back. So, my point back on this topic is you know, if you have an acknowledgement, what are you going to do? So, you know, if you this is kind of the all or nothing type of proposal, so right. if it doesn't go through, what is, what is our next option? So, what is it going to cost us? Is it going to cost us more? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And again, um, it'll cost you more because then we'll have to unpack this with somebody else. Um, you know, we went through from a member perspective, we went through a couple of things. You can try and do a hot spot. You can try and do some of the other things in the end. It's going to cost you more from an operational standpoint, just being transparent. If this gets voted down, I'm going right to these guys or the spectrum leadership say, all right, you can't shut down my operations. So what does that actually so, cost us if, if it voted down? I don't have that answer because, um, I, I just haven't had those conversations yet with them. I mean, I would think that well, we've been having we've been having them at a high level, but to have them sit and and do the do the quote for us, um, you know, we'll, we we would. Because I'm a business fee for internet, and I don't really watch a lot of TV, so I understand the need for the internet. But I'm doing less. Yep. And so for me to jump up to pay four point six, 
is, is a big jump for most people. And I feel for it's not even the option to say no, like it is now, it's an option. Why is yeah. that an option? I, again, it, it, you can vote it down and then we just. Be, because again, this is this this is how their system. This is their proposal to us. This is how we get the best pricing for the park. This is this is an all or nothing. Everybody will get. It's similar to the cable, right? How many people in the park do not get internet. Uh, so again, we yeah we talked we talked about that earlier. So there's two thousand one hundred and sixty two sites. Five sixty two. To, yep, and so you're looking at 1,600 currently have modems. Larry's point: 562 members do not have modems. Great, great question. So, out of the 562, yours and mine are coming by Monday, is what I was told. So between eight and twelve. Yeah. yeah. So. So to, an to answer the question out of five, it's re it's already recorded. So um, it's on the waiting list right now out of that 562. We originally had 130 that were on the waiting list that we had to do an addendum to get modems because again, the challenge has been the modems were on allocation. So back to the individualness of, well, I want one and I don't, we would have to forecast with Spectrum because the modems were allocated and then we would give them a number. And again, just being transparent, we would put a 15% adder on that number. And when we said, all right, it's time to get on the waiting list, that 15% was gone like that. So we, we had 130 on an addendum and we had another 36 on top of that after the addendum that we went crawling back and said, can you give me another one? So there's 166 on top of that. So again, the majority of the park and back to where we're seeing the membership go is remote working. I We have younger uh, families coming in, uh, you know, hey, I would tell my kids, shut the phone off, right? Go, you got a beautiful lake. Go learn how to play tennis or golf or shuffleboard. Roger will teach you how to fish, right? <laughs> They're like, hey, listen, um, I want to I wanna connect. I want to stream Netflix. I want to do this. I want to do that. So that that's the environment that we're in. We lost 10 people that work from here. Correct. My husband, Zoom. If you create them, they get an option. I, I yeah. think it should be optional. Yeah. I I hear you. I understand you. It's it's kind of moved out of that realm. It's uh unfortunately it's uh, all or nothing on that. Uh, let me let me get to him and I'll get back to you. Sorry. Well, you know, hypothetically, it's, it's both past and these nodes or mesh nodes that you're talking about. Are those uh, devices on a shelf, or will we have to wait for chips to come from all the systems? That's a very valid question, actually. Oh, uh, welcome to his nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just, oh my God. Um, so, uh, as far as nodes go and all the fiber, um, these are things that we um, are installing just dozens of every day. Um, and so, we've got warehouses full of them. Um, for both like the nodes, um, all the fiber that's contained to run it. Um, I need the electronics on either end of it. Um, I need the modems or access points. We've got warehouses full of it. If for whatever reason, you know, warehouse over on this side of the state is empty, we're going over in Zealand on the other side of the state, and then they can help us out. If not, we're going down to Ohio. If not, we're down to Indiana, Hawaii. Like, we're, we're going to move it around for a week. Am I correct in assuming that fiber optics exist outside the park? Oh yeah, oh, very much. And all you're doing is scattering that into the nodes, and everything else is running through the core. That I was gonna say that's a um, there 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 is a lot of fiber that's available, but one of the things that we're needing to bring in is additional fiber, um, not just you know one or two, um, but you know we're bringing in you know just large large uh, accounts of fiber to be able to support this. Um, and so a big part is also the electronics at either end of it. Um, and so you know there is a lot of fiber that's existing, but what we're needing to do is supplement it. Um, because, um, you know, like we, we talked about earlier, um, you know, like so your two-inch holes now have to be 
60 basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or 12. Or really. Well, you know, like for, you know, for the Verizon towers out there, Spectrum is their backhaul. You know, like we're the ones that have the fiber in the ground or up on the pole. You know, Spectrum, Spectrum uh, or Verizon releases that from us. And so, you know, like we're the ones that have it. And so, you know, like we're the ones that can you know, bring in the best deals without having to bring in, you know, another 50 miles of fiber like ATT might have to do or something like that. Hey, folks, we're only talking $92 more than what you're paying now. <laughs> more than you're paying now. You know, you ought to think about that. I talked me 400 bucks. Uh, that's, see, that's what it cost me for Florida for four months. I mean, I agree. The question I have is let's say, let's say hypothetically get shut down. Yes. The members say no, okay? So we don't, I mean, obviously the service is working now. So magically on uh, October 15th, it's just going to automatically just go out. Yeah, and can I speak to that? Go ahead. Can you do a, like, no, I want to speak to that. So, I mean, like, it yeah. seems like it's working fine now. So it's not working fine at all. That's the problem. I'm just saying that, I mean, it's, it's not working. Fine. So let me expand on that. It's not working, and because we continue to try to band aid it, it is not a benefit for either one of us. It's really not. There's, it's, we've exhausted everything we can do. And here's the other hard truth. We're struggling with it the way that it is now in today's technology. And you all know how fast technology changes. So if you think you can just keep it here and that it's just going to be status quo, that could not be further from the truth. It's going to continue to get worse. Um, so again, it's just, it's not, it's not possible um, to do that. Young lady behind Bob. Yes, she's been. Wait. I am assuming that if we go yes, that on our October bill will be this new price. No. But yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, we'll continue until Mr. Yeah. Joseph fills the ground, the parts of chips or whatever. We will continue on with what is currently hooked up until we switch. So what she's explaining is this is an assessment. So yes, it would show up on your bill in October once passed. So it'll be part of your annual dues. It'll continue to go forward. The billing during that gap from the time we launch to you know your your assessment and your dues are in October, you will see that 426. That bill will continue to be as is until we flip the switch to the new, um, the new service. But the service will continue. And the the, the service would get that's the cut over that's the cutover period that we would we would start talking about. But again, understand that would all happen in the fall, and during the fall time frame, are you condo or park? Just park. Yeah. So that that. Construction is going to be during the fall time frame, so that's why we target it for the off season. You may see, and I don't want to step on Brian or Jeremy's toes, but as they start digging around and connecting things, you may see some interruption in service. You see it now, right? And I, I, because even though um, you guys have individual accounts built into Spectrum, I, I can show you my Spectrum file on my email. <laughs> 23,942 emails I get because it is service out, service out, service out, service out, service out. Um, so you will you will potentially see some interruption in service as they start construction. When will that start? What's that? What month is that starting? Again, it would it would start in it would start in the off season. So again, if we were to do um, sign a contract nine one, however quickly they can start getting their resources, boots on the ground, you're looking at, you know, October 15 is when our technically our whole contract ends. And then what happens if it's not up and running by the 15th of April next year, then are we going to get some feedback or anything? Like we're, right now, when we, we sign up for a box and we get charged for getting that for the whole year, but the box doesn't come in until halfway through the summer, they still don't give us half of our money back. So if, if we, so the, sh the short answer that I would challenge Spectrum with is if, if we're missing those targets and Jeremy and I have sat down and had this conversation that 
if this is a go, we need to have bi-weekly touch points on where are we at to the milestones, where are we at to delivering this. And if we miss that, then then yeah, just being very candid with Buckley and Jeremy and the rest of the team here, we would go back and say, if this is not operational by April 15, we're, we're gonna need we're gonna need some credit or some compensation for that. So now to caveat again to that, that I already know dealing with this project and the bridge is if that milestone is missed due to their inability to do it or weather whatever stuff that's out of their control then that's going to have to be a conversation between sandy pines and spectrum but the best interest for the membership is it's got to be turned on april 15 and if we miss that then we need to have a serious sit down conversation Yes, you've been waiting patiently. I have. Very simple. Okay, so when we get our pre modem and wireless router, what is the guarantee on that? If it goes bad, how much is it going to cost us to replace it? Nothing. Great question. Yeah, so that equipment is replaced and, and managed by us. So just like at your home, if your modem or your router goes bad, because it's ours, so if you use ours, if you, you made a great point on using other routers because that we don't have enough time to train our employees on every router in the world, so we train them on our own. Um, so it's very difficult for them when you call and say you have one. So um, if anything happens with that, you've got that tailored support to the 800 number. We actually find that you know, with our new technology, the new box, the stuff I mentioned, most things can be handled remotely. Um, but if they can, they'll drive and ship you a box. It doesn't cost you anything to ship it. When you get that box, um, it'll have a label to send the other one back, or you can drop it off to any UPS store. Just literally hand them the modem, and they know what to do with it. we got a partnership with UPS. Um, but yeah, you will never pay to fix our broken stuff. Um, we're giving it to you to use. Um, and you're paying for a service. We expect that you should be able to use that, um, that service. I've got a question for you. The speed of the modem, you know, a lot of the companies, cable companies around the country, can control the speed of those modems. And they found that by uh, going for a more expensive service to get faster internet and faster operation, they weren't getting it because the companies we're choking it off. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. So there's two different ways that companies do that. One is throttling. I think we kind of talked about it earlier. I think you did where the speed goes down. They kind of throttle your speed. And then, yeah, and then the other one, yeah, look at me. How are you doing that? I've been here 17 years. I learned a few things along the way. Um, the other one would be like a data cap. So you reach a certain amount of data coming in, and they say it breaks, you got too much. We don't do either of those. Yeah. Um, that is not how we operate. We've got enough bandwidth and pipe to supply 75 sandy pines. Um, so have a blast. <laughs> we're not going to cap you and we're not going to throttle. Now, um, there was one in the back that, if you don't mind, I'm just trying to, I know you can't see everybody, so it looks like we're missing you, but yeah, she's about. <laughs> just a quick comment. Okay. Sandy Pines is the best spot in the country. If the young lady who said she's only here three months rented an apartment for three months, it would cost her more for the apartment, and that wouldn't include her cable or a TV or a field trip or water and all that stuff. So the best five in the country. Thank you, Lynn. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we're not speaking call and have to ship that would be I'm sorry. But you still have to come here. So what I'm saying is before you report a call us, it'll be here when you get here. Right now. Yeah, where's that? Where's that? Yeah. Okay, I want to go ahead. Um, we do have some writing questions. He did, I didn't answer that. No, I thought we were, yeah, no, I didn't answer that. Um, his question was 
that he's got internet service and he's got devices that he is connected to from Florida while he's gone during the winter. Super common. Well, his question was, is when we flip the switch, if he's not here when that flip happens, is he's gonna lose access to being able to view his cameras. So if we're talking about like the April 15th target, then yeah, um, from April 15th, whenever we switch to the new system officially, then yeah, the old internet modems are not gonna work. So whatever time frame that is, but again, if these are things logistically that, that we are certainly want to work through and address, but we're talking to the, when do you normally come? Uh, Mid-May. Mid-May. So about a month that, okay. Yeah, so yeah, certainly it's a good point to. So, and again, the purpose of having this town hall is trying to get all the information out. You guys are asking some great questions that we have some takeaways that we will have to come back to the membership on and say, hey, what about if I don't show up until May or June, Am I going to lose camera connectivity? Am I going to, so we'll have to get you some of that feedback back to you. Larry, I'll take you and then I want to get to the right. All right. Get this for him. Okay. He, Thank he you. made a comment in his field and I caught it and I want to check on it. You said if everybody wants the energy to do, you have worked and you given it to us free. Can you do that? I said it's $3. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be held for the end of the day. Okay. Just accept it. I said it was twelve dollars, but if everybody wanted it, number three, so yeah. <laughs> free, free, I get it, I get it. Yeah. If it was free, it would already be proposal. <laughs> yeah. I have this in my back pocket just in case you want it. I'll give it free right now. <laughs> oh, good lord. Um, well, digital tier one or two. So it's like it's the it's basically every channel, the most popular channels outside of the major cable network channels. Um, like, you know, obviously the broadcast and stuff is not in there as well, but, you know, you guys are going to probably throw tomatoes at me because I don't watch a whole lot of TV. <laughs> so I'm trying to think, what is on there? <laughs> yeah, I'm mostly an internet guy, family guy, so that's where I spend my time. But, so yeah, they'll have that list. Uh, well, and, uh, that yeah. Oh, there's just a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. so well, yeah. You can use this one, Seth, and even write the right click and type in your address. Yeah, you can see where there's a button that says channel line up. After you click TV, yeah, if you click TV and scroll down to your channel line, it forces you to put in an address. So you can even just do the office address or whatever. Um, but then you can get the full, you can see every single channel that's in there. I can also email you anything that you need. So if that becomes a realistic conversation as a whole, let me know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, $3, just so that we say that one more time. This, this number. Yeah. Not, not the, <laughs> All right, let me go through some of the writing questions. They may be redundant, but I do want to make sure that we capture the individuals that couldn't make it tonight that wrote in uh, some questions. So, uh, site 5332 on the resolution, how much will the price increase? All right, who had that difference? Okay. $98. $35.50 a month for. Yep, it's thirty-five fifty a month. Good. Um, site four eighty-five. I'm not exactly sure what is being proposed, but could there be two rates? One for those who use it all year, winter visits, security cameras, etc., and another rate for the truly six-month users. Just a thought. I think we already we already addressed that. Had that conversation. This is a twelve-month. Um, all in for cable and and modems and internet. So, thank you for that question. Site 482. Will we will we be able to have a DVR capability for the same standard price? So DVR is an option, right? And again, that option is once you call in, once you receive the welcome letter, you call in, you set up all of your information, you say you want a DVR, they'll ship it to you. And then they'll charge you nine bucks, twelve bucks. Yeah. Years. So there's a service fee that goes with that. So um, it's nine ninety nine for the box, but then depending on how many DVRs you get, so it's normally twelve ninety nine for the service fee. That's the ability to do everything. Uh, but and then it's nine ninety nine if you want that without the box. So you can still do the cloud, is what they call it. Yeah. So if you still want to be able to record, but you don't want to pay the twelve ninety nine for the service and ninety nine or nine ninety nine for the box, you don't have to. You just pay the $9.99 um, and then it just goes 
somewhere in the universe. So, yeah, 1999, it does it include two DVRs? So the 1999, yeah. So what he asked was, so I said 1299. So he said 1999. So if you get more than one DVR, that 1299 service fee is 1999 for up to four boxes. So yeah, good catch. Yeah. The volume the like to be able to store. Isn't it like more online? Oh, yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. Okay. I think it's, I believe it's uh, limited by the number of shows, not by the number of hours or gig or anything like that. Um, okay. I, I, I believe it's actually by the, by the show. Oh, the the game. Game. Yeah, somewhere in there. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and then and like the number of episodes known. So it's, it's, it's a lot more. Yeah, it's on, like I thought last number I heard it. We, and if this is something, I mean, if you're a big recorder, I know it's a huge number, but last time I remember it was like 150 shows. Um, that you record 150. 150. That's not 150 shows? Do you uh, let's put it right now? The ice system works, it has up to 600. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's good. All right. Um, site D142. Will we still be able to have cable modems on our site as opposed to using public Wi Fi? And will they be included in the service? This is preferable for reliability, speed. Etc. If public Wi-Fi will be the only option, will clients be given external IP addresses, or will they be stuck behind a public NAT with no possibility to accept incoming connections? I'm going to give that one to Ryan. So that's you know, yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Will you have uh, cable modems at your site? Yes. 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 All right. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, site N108, is it possible to have a modem internet without having cable TV? If so, is there a cost difference? No. I think it's no to, no to both of those. So, um, bear with me. Well, I'm going to read this, the last one, and then I'll read the second to the last. Uh, from the condos, 7026. This goes to a vote in August by the membership, assuming it passes. What is the ETA with the new package with promised upgrades to the internet? I live in the condos and work from home with my headquarters being 185 miles away. Without internet, I would need to sell and move. So we already went kind of through that timeline. The plan is by April 15 to get everything up and running. If you're in the condos, you have the ability to go residential at a significant cost increase. Uh, K328, um, his questions are eight questions, so bear with me a second. Does streaming app for individual Sandy Pines accounts work the same on any internet connection or just when connected to Sandy Pines internet? And they all said? Yes. Yeah. It's yes. only on this network, yeah. right? And just, you don't get a bill. Just on this network. Right. Unless you buy something. Yeah. <laughs> if it's right. Hey, gold yeah. stuff. If you get something, if you get a bill, then you get the channels somewhere else. Yes. Only the HBO that you get HBO, but you don't get HBO. No, you get the. Yeah, so the way. Now, that's a good question, actually. So. It's the whole thing? No, oh, great. Makes an easy answer. All right. So basically, when they're off site, it's still the off site experience, though, right? Okay. And now, is it, I'm going to catch you up in a second. But is the caveat, if they're, even if they're off site, but let's say they're on a spectrum network, would they then get the full spectrum experience there, or is it still the. Yes and no. Uh, okay, mercy now. Let's go to the bottom. Let's go to the bottom. So, uh, so the, when, when, you're, when you're off net, um, or off, you know, off the home, off the network, whatever. Um, the the off that experience for video streaming is about ninety percent, I believe, of of uh, what the, the the full lineup is. Reason for that is contractual um, with the content providers. Not something we want to do. We want everyone to have everything, but you know, because of you know current existing contracts with content providers. Um, so if there are other uh, uh, modems or internet connections. That have the same setup that are you know bulked up that are MG properties, then yes. But for any spectrum um, internet connection, no. Okay. 
All right. Sense? Yeah. So what I was trying to get at, and I wanted to answer your question accurately, and that's why I, I solicited this help. The, the app has two different levels of experience, where it gives you a little bit better of an experience. What I mean by that is more access and channels and features. Not an enormous amount, like you said, 90%. If you go off of reservation, so to speak, it's still we still want to be able to give you something, but because of some of the things he mentioned and others, we can't give you the full flow. So that's the experience you would have if you were outside of Sandy Pines um, and you know you were purchasing extra from Spectrum. And so if I just bought the sports new for six dollars a month, then I can take all of most of the channel for that half year plus the sports view to my house. But it would be, again, it's on your, on, well, actually, no, how would that work? Would it be a device authentication or would you be able to download this app, like, for example, to like an Xbox or something or just uh, HDMI? Now? So, so, um, if that's you, a good question. So I like why, it. I see where you're going. So, 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 so if you want to pass, <laughs> more of a sports review, there's going to be a login password um, that's going to be needed that's going to identify your account. Um, so it's not device based, but it's going to be credential based. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I want to, and if you don't know this, do not guess, because this is a super important question. What I just heard him ask is if I pay $6, can I have way more than $6 of service somewhere else? So uh, that's what makes me nervous. Sports. Um, I don't know how that's going to go because there's a lot of blackout dates. Or, or, uh, All right, let's not guess. Let me yeah. get you an answer. All right, and I'll okay. filter you that by the end of the day Monday. We'll take, we'll take that away. Because that's a great question. I don't want to mess that one up because it's cool. Put yeah. <laughs> it. Six bucks or four? Yeah, so we got, we, got, we got to finish K328 yeah, yeah. that was question one. All right. Question two, we've already answered. Is there cloud DVD service included? There is service. It's not included. It's an upgrade. You can bill it directly uh, to your account. Uh, same for can each site add additional services such as HBO Max, Showtime? We just answered that as well. Um, add an upgrade build directly to your uh, account. What is the channel lineup for 84 channels? Um, we'll get that updated. I apologize for the eye chart. We'll get, a, we'll get an updated channel list. We'll dump that out on the website for the members to review. Will there be a, a, a guide? You head to a guide, and there'll be like a regular um, internet. Yeah. Uh, the guide is on X channel, X channel, you know, whatever channel there is. Yeah. NBC, ABC is on such channel. Well, that be something you'll see on the screen. Yeah. Like it's a piece of paper. No, it's actually called an interactive channel guide. So interactive just simply means that you can even look for things that aren't on. If you want to go out like a couple of weeks to see what's coming on, um, you want to search for things. You can actually search like if you know the name of a movie, you want to search for it to see if maybe it's on. It's okay, a full point interactive. If you don't know the button, you can go to or six. Yeah, yeah those they won't be like that. All right, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Uh, does it include additional sports channels packages like we currently get so we can watch the Tiger? I don't know if you want to watch the Tigers, but I am a Tigers <laughs> fan. Um, but, um, Red Wings, Pistons, things like that. So uh, can we watch regional sports channels on the current package or is that a sports upgrade? Well, there's always some regional programming already in our normal lineup because you've got the big boys like the ESPNs and the Fox Sports and stuff like that. So the quick answer was yes, of course. But there's also the, like a the little bit more niche stuff that not everybody watches, like some of the golf tournaments and whatnot, where you might find them in different, you know. So yes and no, but it would be exhausting trying to figure out what that looks like for everybody. Okay. Yeah. Um, one question that is not on here, but I did get a, a, a phone call. Um, regional channel. So Hopkins of Michigan is in between Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo. Okay. We see some members call in and say, hey, we used to get Weather Channel and, and some of the regional stuff specific to Grand Rapids. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, some of them have changed to Kalamazoo. Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo, it's, you know, it's still West Michigan, but there is a preference out there. I don't know, has anybody seen that? That change at all? I had probably there, not... there's ABC out of Grand Rapids and ABC out of Kalamazoo. Yeah. I'd rather have the Grand Rapids one right. than Kalamazoo. I, I had about a, a half a dozen questions about that. So, um, but specifically regional champions, we will we will get West Michigan regional champions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. 
Um, if existing sites are satisfied with speed and performance of their 200 Mbps modem, why is it necessary to upgrade to the 400 Mbps? <laughs> It's a lot better than the alternative of nothing. <laughs> the, 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 the 200 MBPS is not going to be available any longer. Um, if this is going to be a, this is going to be a follow up. Again, we're going to have to give the, the membership. I'm going to be positive when this passes, right? We're going to have to get the membership the logistics of OK. I have a 400 BP MBPS modem and a router coming to me. What do I do with the old? Do I toss it? Do I get a package and mail it back to Spectrum? That is a question. We'll have to figure out the logistics on that. Um, yeah. We'll get you. We'll get you some. I have my preference, but uh, I think where our preference is a line. It's probably we just come pick them up. Yeah. 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 I would prefer yeah, that was for Spectrum. Be our preference yeah. Actually. Yep. Okay. Um, what is Spectrum going to do to make TV streaming at work on multiple platforms? We already discussed that with Roku, Fire Sticks, things of that nature. Um, Sandy Pines was promised scrolling program guides uh, when the current ClearQuam broadcast system was deployed back in 2014. It's taken 18, 18 it's taken eight years taken eight years, but Spectrum um, in 2022 finally um, provided that, but then it seemed to have gone away. What's the rational behind discontinuing ClearCom broadcast now that they originally promised functionality, it's finally been delivered and now it's being discontinued? Yeah, I, I, I feel as though we kind of talked about that too, because just what's going in its place. So even if they've satisfied that, why would you want it, even if that was still available? Um, in comparison to what we're talking about, it seems like that would be a huge, well, it's not seen, that would be a huge downgrade. Right. Yeah. right. Okay. Last one. Who is responsible for educating the membership on how to use Spectrum TV streaming apps on all the different hardware, software platforms that can be used on? Android phones, tablets, iPhone, iPads, Google Comcast, Chrome, Chromecast, Roku, Roku TV, Apple TV, yada yada yada. Explain who's gonna who's gonna explain this to the members and how is is there a guide that's gonna come out? So it's fair fair question. There's a lot of different so yeah, that's a very fair question. And there's even we even have YouTube videos. Uh, we've got even on our website, you know, if you're someone that you prefers to read your instructions. Um, so we have um, viewable instructions for how to connect to any of the devices he just mentioned. Well, every device that we can connect to, we have an instruction that we can um, provide. Now, of course, I can give those out to him, but they're already available to you online. Um, and I, I think the easier thing would be to send you a direct link because when you get to that link, it, it categorizes everything. What do I do for this? What do I connect to? How do I do it? And then if you really need the visual, you can watch a video. So I have one final question. Will you three men be back here one year from now with questions? I'd like that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm not going to make yes, right? any questions for the same guys in case of the things blow up. Absolutely. <laughs> if I'm a license, I'm not going to be facetious, but well, it's a valid point. point. Like, we know who you are now. In three weeks, we won't be going to your face. And we'd like to get you guys back and say, hey, it's working fine. And these are the little things we have this week. Yeah. yeah. We'll remember Jeremy's face because it's recorded. Buckley and Ryan were strategically smart to stay <laughs> off camera. I want to add something real quick. Sure. I know that I, I jab a lot, but. I win the lotto tomorrow. I can't hold true to that. Right? <laughs> My point in saying that is your level of success in this is not relying on me or Ryan or Buckley. It's what I set up when I said at the beginning. It's how we have set up this whole department that we are working in the community solutions. So my point is, is there's going to be another Jeremy Mason that has is in the same capacity that is doesn't exist in the environment you're in today, right? So if I win the lotto, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to decline that request. <laughs> yes, yeah. If I win the lotto, it'll be free. I'll come back. One last week. All right, two last questions. We're at five minutes before it. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, last, was it last year when they started doing the scrolling? Uh, 
uh, ran into a situation for CW and uh, uh, the PBS station. PBS got moved to PBS Kids. PBS Kids got wiped out. CW you can't get because it's showing ABC. Okay. And so when I did, and I talked to the office, and they said for me to call Spectrum, <laughs> and I did, and I found out that there's a lawsuit between was I think Thompson. When when the the systems got bought out, and there was a lawsuit involved in the program, and they said, "Well, you may never get it back, even though that it was on the list for CW." Okay. So uh, I'll just that right now because you you asked that question, and then of course I can't. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. I'll, I'll talk about it since you originally talked to me about it. Um, yeah, so there's always um, an ever changing lineup um, of channels. Usually the majority stay the same, um, but because of changing contractual legal agreements and things like that, some move in, some move out. Um, it's not uncommon, you know, because of litigation that, um, you know, like some might move down for a little bit, others don't. It's, it's unfortunately outside of our you know, technical control of being able to deliver it. Um, now, as far as uh, the lineup not being correct, probably what happened was during a maintenance, if something got moved or switched, it never got switched back, it no longer happened. I, I'm, 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 I'm used to it. That's exactly it. Because what's necessary is that someone has to go into the particular quam you know, machine that, you know, that, that spits it out and actually by hand change all of that. That's no longer the case. So um, you know, on the Spectrum app or on the set-top boxes, the lineup will always be accurate. It'll, I think it's got like seven days or 14 days of programming that's already you know there for you to look at. Um, you know, in the future, uh, it'll always be updated and accurate. Right. But you get a lot of people still that doing that. Yeah, but you said it's still doing that. Yeah, right? it's still. It's not been correct. No. Yeah, I can't speak to anything yeah. as far as today and what you have as far as that, just because again, we're not about on back. Last last question in the back. Okay. I'm just sitting here. Based on little on people who are here, based on what I know for 40 years here, you're in the pool, you're in the golf cart, you're in the bank, you're in the restaurants. How are you going to educate those people who are out there that aren't sitting here that you probably show up, who aren't going to watch it because I'm telling you right now? I know the majority of people don't bother to watch the two models this morning. How can we get this passed? So, yep, I completely agree. So, a couple of things, right? From a campaign standpoint, this is step one. We're going to be talking to Buckley and Jeremy and Ryan. Uh, let's bring them back again next month in July, or Buckley will tell Jeremy come next month in July. But we're going to try and have another town hall. We have. Um, is we can only do so much, right? I'm going to use, you know, what my father said to me, you can bring the horse to water, but are you going to get the horse to drink? That's kind of up to the horse, right? So, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So, um, we're, 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 Ian is doing a great job in communications. He's going to put it on the website. We're going to put a campaign out there. We're going to dump this recording out there. We're going to have as much stuff going throughout. We'll, we'll put we'll put as much information out on the um, CCs that we can, just with information. And here's the pros and cons. Here's what it means, and not just on this one. I mean, this is going to be an active year, right? I think we have five five total that are that are going out there. So those CC areas will probably be stacked with, you know, information overload. But um, you know that's that's the where we do have a plan, and we're going to start executing that next week after we bring the board up to speak on it, and we'll go from there. I'll answer. Yep. Um, and that's all of us here. We have learned a lot. Thank you for all your information. We 
we have a responsibility when it comes up in general conversation to, you know, pump it up. I mean, for $98 more a year, look what we're getting. And we're improving our whole system to this department. Right. So if Thank we, you. you know, we can spread the word. I have a spectrum <laughs> shirt for her. Yeah. <laughs> That is huge. We um, safety and uh, use an example safety and security, right? We we were getting asked, hey, how can we get the public safety to, you know, do better in enforcing the rules? And last year, safety and security came up with, well, if you have 18 fully staffed individuals at uh, times two for two eyes, you got 36 eyes, right? <laughs> You're not going to catch everything. So they came up with the mantra. We as members, if you see something, say something, right. add the additional eyes out there, add the additional communication and, and get the word out. So that that was the purpose of tonight. So thank you for attending. All right. I think we are. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being out here. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you.